Hey, welcome back. We're the Kampai guys. We Kampai, so you don't have to. Unless you want to. Today, we're gonna take a look at the Akashi Red. So we're going to take a look at the Akashi Red. I've yeah. never had this whiskey before, but I have noticed it many times. Yeah, it's, so... It's a pretty cool bottle. It's kind of stylish. Yeah, I found this at the supermarket today. And similar to you, I've seen it many times. And I've always been kind of intrigued by the, the bottle. Mm. It's very utilitarian, I guess. Simple, but stylish. So. Yeah. It looks like uh, something you'd find in like an 1800s drugstore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like an old school medicine bottle. With a slightly classier logo than yeah. 1800s medicine, probably. But, yeah. <laughs> so, David, do you know anything about Akashi? I don't really. Know. I don't even know the company that makes it, to be honest with you. Yeah, so I did a little bit of research today, and they're actually based in. Uh, Hyogo Prefecture. Hyogo. Yes. Okay. In a city called Akashi. Hyogo is where, I guess, for our overseas viewers, like Kobe, they would associate. Right, Hyogo yes. With. Yeah, so, so it's where Kobe is. Yeah, Hyogo near, Prefecture Osaka. is kind of. Next to Kansai? Yeah, west of the Osaka area. Mm. Yeah. Alright, so the Akashi is made by a company called Egashima. And they've been around since the 1800s. They were actually the first company to get a whiskey distilling license in Japan. Before Suntory? Yeah, before Suntory, yes. Yeah, recently we talked a lot about Suntory and Nika on this channel. So mm -hmm. if you haven't seen those videos, please check them out. But yeah, I was under the impression that Suntory were the first. Or yeah. Nika after. Right. The dude from Nika went to Scotland to right. <laughs> basically bring scotch to Japan. Yeah. So it's a little complicated because uh, Suntory and Nika, they did start producing whiskey before this company, um, Egashima. However, Egashima received their license to produce whiskey before any other company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They didn't start really producing whiskeys until the 1980s, mm. I believe. So the Akashi Red is their entry level whiskey. This bottle cost about 800 yen. Pretty reasonable. That's pretty cheap. Supermarket. Yeah. It's about Tori's, about Tori's price, right? Yeah. But it is a smaller bottle than Tori's, it looks like. So Tori's comes in like a 700 milliliter one, right, about 800. So yeah. this looks a bit smaller than that. So. The label it has like a really cool, uh, like grainy texture to it. Like yeah, how, how would you describe um, that? Well, I studied art at college, so this looks like something you would do like charcoal drawings on or something. Really? Like that thick paper that has a texture, yeah. like the old school paper, a bit like a, a tree bark mm -hmm. kind of texture. All right, so today we're going to try this whiskey on the rocks and as a highball. I'm expecting, honestly, something maybe one step above, like, Tories. So between Tories and Kaku? Kind of, so yeah. in the middle. Yeah, yeah in terms yeah. of quality. Okay. The alcohol is not strong. It's not burning my nostrils like Kaku really? or some other whiskeys. It smells a bit lighter. Um, according to an online review, I Me found. Medicinal. I get that. Really? That's yes. what it says here, actually. Yes. Yeah. It says, uh, for the nose, fruity, spicy, some sherry, medicinal smoke, and a little sweet. 
I don't know if that's because you talked about the 18th century medical bottle <laughs> earlier and you just put that in my brain. <laughs> okay, another review says uh, subtle caramel sweetness. Okay. Yeah. Caramel, sweet, fruity. Yeah, and a hint of honey. I can definitely get that. Sure. It's uh, surprisingly similar to the nose on the Suntory Kokubi. Yeah, but less. The alcohol burning is mm-hmm. less. Right. So yeah. Definitely the three percent difference. You can yeah. tell. Yeah. That. I agree. Yes. It's not smoky. You said you thought it was going to be smoky. I don't think it's smoky. You? No, not at all. It doesn't have the harsh aftertaste or like the cheap background yeah. taste of Tories. Yeah. But it has a similar taste. Cocoa bean is the superior whiskey between yeah. Tories and cocoa bean. Yeah. And this tastes like it's kind of right in, in the middle. The Tory, uh, cocoa bean is twice the price of Tories. Mm-hmm. But this tastes like it's like, we said like 1,000 yen, which is exactly where it yeah. tastes like. Yeah. So. Okay. Quite nice. It is quite for the nice. Price. Yeah, definitely for the price. Yeah. yeah. On the uh, Japanese COSPA, cost yes. performance rate, yes. it's pretty up there. COSPA. <laughs> <laughs> if you come to Japan, if you come to live in Japan, that's a very important word. That's not like a knockoff Costco or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> Online reviews describe the finish as fruity sweet with chocolate and very short. I really do get the chocolate thing. Me too. I totally understand. Me too. For me, the, the, the chocolatey taste kind of lingers. It does, yeah. The sweetness lingers. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, another reviewer says, vanilla and malt with bits of spice. I can um, kind of get the spice too. I'd say it's the finish is more me- medium and short. Mm. Yeah. It's not got a harsh, long aftertaste. But it's there like 30 seconds a minute later. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite nice. It doesn't. It is. Uh, That's it. I think it's good on the rocks. It's a good rocks whiskey. I think so too. Yeah, for the price point and just like the whole bottle design and mm-hmm. label and some kind of interesting flavors. Right. It's pretty good for 800 yen. I think so wow. too. Yeah. That's eight dollars in America. Yeah. Like, what can you buy whiskey for eight dollars in America? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about Japan. If you ever come to Japan, you'll find that whiskey is a lot cheaper here than in the States. But like, I mean like, a lot of times you pay very low prices for anything, like snacks, even like bento or cheap food. Mm -hmm. But the quality is often above the price. Right. So, yeah. and it applies to everything, including whiskey. So, yeah. yeah. I don't think you could buy a lot of whiskeys in foreign countries for $8 US. That would be like this. Yeah, it's definitely quality for the price point. Mm. And for that reason, I would give this... On the rocks, Kampai score? Yeah. Okay. Eight Kampai's. Eight campfires. Yes. You? Yeah. You too? Eight campfires. All right. Cool. Do you think it's going to be better in a highball or worse? Um, I can imagine the flavor being a little diluted. We might lose like the sweetness or the chocolate thing or some of the smaller taste points. In yeah. The highball. Yeah. It's We've been comparing this Akashi Red as somewhere between Tori's and cocoa bean, so I have a feeling it's going to be pretty good as a highball. Alright, so we have our Akashi Red highballs here, and we're going to give them a shot. Already made up, yep. so let's go. Let's go. Very smooth. Hmm. Yeah. Not much aftertaste. No. Yeah. Of course, some of the notes have been lost as we expected, but... Mm-hmm. It's pretty like a pretty standard hardwood taste. It's just a very clean, clear taste to it. Mm. 
very like subtle whiskey mm -hmm. taste, I would say. Yeah. Like, like I feel like I get a chunk of this. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good thing, but. It's a little scary that you discovered this. I don't know it's a chuggable. <laughs> yeah, like if you were blindfolded, you'd have a hard time like deciding which whiskey this was. Right, yeah. So, do you think they made this to be a high whiskey? Or? That I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't really find any information online mm. about that. So there's no like recommended way to drink it. So. I would assume it's. I mean, it's marketed as an entry level whiskey. So usually for stuff like that, it's pretty versatile, mm. right? This isn't a unique highball. This but is just very. It's not a highball. Like but thirst quenching. The, the red is not a highball you want to drink just on a normal day. I don't think. Right. You want to drink something a bit off kilter or something. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is like you just don't want any like, crazy taste going on. You just want to taste whiskey soda. Right. And this is perfect for that. Mm -hmm. So. It was as, good on the rocks, but. As a versatile just, whiskey, yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, if I was to drink something on the rocks, probably I would go for like Kaku or you know I drink bourbon, so right. yeah. <laughs> but in a highball, this kind of whiskey works because it's not overly scotchy. Mm -hmm. Like if you drink some like Scotch whiskey, it can it's not easy to drink even in a highball. But this one is quite easy to drink, chuggable. So. In terms of entry level. Whiskies. Santori Kaku is still number one for me. It's very simple, it's very affordable, and yeah, zero complaints. So, highball form. I think I can guess your Kampai level. But how many Kampais? Akashi Red. I'd give it. An eight. Really? Same level. Yeah. I give it a nine. Oh, okay. Because it's slightly better than a high ball. Yeah. And yeah. The, it's very cheap. Cheap whiskey, but very nice taste. For a okay. It's we're a really not, cool bottle. We're not saying this is like premium whiskey. For no. a budget whiskey. No. It's just the price of it. <laughs> we're not taking into consideration. Like, Obviously, if money is no object, then. Like $80 but... bottles. Like that. <laughs> yeah, for a 800 yen whiskey. Yes. This is the price. Yeah. Of the score, I like <laughs> Cool. Nice. That was a fun review. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned for future whiskey reviews. We'll have a ton of them. And if you enjoyed this, please give us a like, please subscribe, please leave a comment, and we'll see you for the next combat. Yep. Yeah. See you next time, guys. Peace. Peace.